Hello, Eric Harvey, back hold trail instructions on a assignment of a call sign. Advising this contact, you have information, Mike. North South Nation, Mike, time 19 five zero Zulu, weather wind 260 at Niner, visibility 10, sky clear. Temperature 27, dew point 10, altimeter 2986. Uh, that's our noise, 2-9-er, right? New Slant Air, partner noise, 2-9-er. Torrance, North Tower Frequency, 133.07. Torrance, South Tower Frequency, 124.0. Notice the airman, our noise, 2 9 left as he's out of service. And uh, 5G notice in effect for the vicinity of Torrance. Contact flight service for more information. Multiple cranes in the vicinity of Torrance. Check notice for more information. Use class for red activity owner in the vicinity of the airport. Use cost for work in progress, chasing all runways and taxiways. Hazardous weather information for California coastal water and zero flight service frequencies. All aircraft be back, hold trail instructions or any assignment or call sign. Advising this contact, you have information, Mike. Mike! All right, welcome aboard, everyone. You know where we're headed to. We're going to Death Valley. We're going to Robbie. Nice hot day. Looks like a 30 degrees Celsius out there. And looks like we're all good to go here. Let's make it happen. Oh, there's a car. I'll let him go. All right. Information Mike. Okay. Here we go. Long. Towards ground. Six, seven, six, three, five, zero. Papa, clear. Two, six, uh, two, nine, right. At Charlie. 2-9, right? So 6 3 5 0 pop to ground, doing 2 and right, taxi to Charlie, Alpha Juliet. Taxi via Juliet, uh, taxi Juliet via Alpha, 2-9, right. Charlie, Alpha, Five, Juliet, Juliet Papa. sir. Ford's ground, good afternoon, station air, 1215 Golf, uh, East D's, ready to taxi with Mike. What was my uh, station air calling? Yep, Station Air 1215 Golf, East D's ready to taxi with uh, information, Mike. Station 1215 Golf, Torrance Ground, uh, Roger, are you okay with the 29 left departure? Absolutely, I'm uh, doing special flight rules, so just let me know how you want me to depart the area. 215 Golf, Roger, you can ask just sir, for a left box or a right box, uh, we'll coordinate it. It's just better to get you off 29 left for right now, runway 29 or left, taxi via Alpha and Golf. All right, 29 left uh, via Alpha and Golf, 1215 Golf. All right, here we go. Man, it's getting hot out there. Summer's coming out. Five zero, Papa, you said you're going back to 29 right, correct? Uh, that's affirmative, uh, 29 right, five zero, Papa. Roger. Here's Alpha, and then Golf. It's coming out right over ground, here. Ground, 2126, X-ray clear of 29 right on Charlie, stand back to X ray Torrance Ground, runway 29 right, taxi via Charlie Alpha Julia. Six via Charlie Alpha 29 right. 26 X ray. 26 X ray, thank you. All right, the run up area is right here on the left. Let's go to the corner. RPM. There we are. Okay, that's a drop of one third ground uh, November 73G Whiskey Tango just cleared two nine or left like a taxi back on two nine or left and head back to SoCal. Alpha Golf, the 2 under left, 7 3 who can you go? 90. Both within 175 and 50 of each other. There we go. All right, here comes the prop. And all is working. Manifold pressure, RPM, and oil pressure. 
Let's do idle check. There we go. Back to a thousand. We'll lean her out. All right, fuel selector both. Cal flaps are open. Trims both set for takeoff. Prop mixture will go forward here in a moment. Flaps are 10 degrees. My lights are on. And we're good to go. Let's give her a little takeoff for a thing. Short of taxiway golf. There's going to be a helicopter landing on the. All right, I'll be doing a normal takeoff off of runway uh, 24 left, uh, sorry, 29 or left. Uh, looks like they'll coordinate my climb for LA special fly rules. I got 4,500 plugged in, 2855, and my squawk is 1201. Any abnormalities prior to rotation, I'll stop the, uh, cut the power, stop, stop straight ahead, taxi off the runway. Anything after rotation, with runway ahead of me, I'll go to cut the power, land straight ahead. If no runway is ahead of me, I'll just land straight ahead. Looks like there's plenty of grass in the area here, trying to avoid uh, obstacles best I can. If I'm above 1,000 feet or at an altitude, which I'm sure I can, I'm able to glide back down to the runway or to a runway, I'll go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I'll just continue uh, straight ahead. And of course, if I have time, I'll go ahead and declare an emergency squawk 7700 and, uh, and fly the airplane while pitched for best glide all along. Otherwise, uh, we should be about, I'm going with an hour and 20 minute flight. But once we get up to a cruise, at least LA Special Flight Rules, I'll get a more accurate time as to what that looks like. So here we go. Sometimes they like us letting them know that run-up is complete, so I'll just do that, then it'll tell me to hold short. Uh, Torrance Ground Station Air 1215 Golf, uh, 29er left run-up, uh, run-up is complete. Better to let them know than not when I don't have to. Alrighty, Death Valley. I know I don't have to do that, but it's nice. Okay, last call at Yeah, 1215 Golf Run-Up is a complete. 215 Golf, Roger, you can continue taxi 124.0 for tower. 24-0, thanks, 15 Golf. All right. Under you a helicopter in the downwind, they're maneuvering below the downwind at 600. I'll say at 1,100 for pattern altitude and look up the traffic and listen for your discretion, uh, 779 Sierra Lima. Sierra Niner, Sierra Lima, I will call your base and I'll call your descent. You'll call my base and descent, uh, 779 Sierra Lima. And Sierra call Mike, we just like a left downward departure to the southeast. Sorry, I did not hear that. Transmission's coming in broken. Sierra call Mike, requesting a left downward departure to the southeast. Sierra Niner, Sierra Lima, I will call your base and I'll call your descent, uh, 779 Sierra Lima. Sierra Niner, Sierra Lima, I will call your base and I'll call your descent, Number eight, Golf Mike, I can't let you do it at 1,100. I already gave that altitude to the aircraft that's um, just ahead into your left now, so you can do it at 600. Three, Golf Mike. If you want to extend out straight out and then turn, I can give you 1,100 after that traffic. Three, Golf Mike, we'll take that. Number eight, Golf Mike, fly straight out then. Straight out, three, Golf Mike. Torrance Tower, Station Air, 1215 Golf, uh, short of 29 or left, left box climb, departure number two in sequence. Did helicopter, you have them in sight? I knew I had a feeling I'd step on someone. There, I get golf mic. there might be a lag in the radar, but I don't show you on a straight out. There you go, Mike, we're on straight out. Number eight, golf mic, you're not going straight out. That's the downwind. So just continue on that heading, meaning at or below your present altitude. At or below. At or below present altitude, there you go, Mike. Number nine, Sierra Lima, maintain at or above 1,400, your present altitude. 1,400, present altitude. Nice Number three, Delta Golf, I'm sorry, I'm going to need you to do a full stop and then uh, taxi back. Number three, Delta Golf, are we trying to left or to land? They are busy. Torrance Tower, November 7th, 3-3, Risky Tango. We're holding short on 2 9 left at Golf. Bling, I'm sorry, November 9 or Sierra Lima, traffic you're following is short final. You're number two, runway 2 9 left, so to land. Short final, number two, 779, Sierra Lima, 2 9 left. Number eight, Golf Mike, at 1,100, you can maneuver at your discretion as long as you're staying south of the runways. Oh, that's three, Golf Mike, 1,100, south of the runway. Number three, Whiskey Tango, Torrance Tower, hold short runway, Channel 11, it's going to be a few minutes. 4,500. Holding short, three, Whiskey Tango. Number three, Whiskey Tango, read back, hold short, two nine or left, and your call sign. We're holding short, two nine or left, 733, Whiskey Tango, two nine or left. Number eight, Golf Mike, is just one pass, correct? 
Correct, 38 Gulf Mike. 38 Gulf Mike, uh, Roger. So after this, it's a right down, um, sorry, left down departure? Frequency 38 Gulf Mike, get departure to the southeast. Oh, 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 to the oh, south, oh, runway 124.0. Oh, 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 Use caution, oh, bird activity oh, on oh, the oh, airport. Oh, Use caution, oh, work garage oh, 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 Man, that's crazy. You hear the ATIS on this frequency. Three Delta Golf, contact ground, sorry about that. Contact ground, three Delta Golf. Let's do this. Torrance Tower, Station Air, 1215 Golf, short of 2 9 or left, number 2 in sequence. Stand by. Uh, number 9 or Sierra Lima, you are number 1 now, rowing to left, clear to land. Number 1, 2 9 or left, clear to land, 779, Sierra Lima. Number All righty. This is some busy airport today. Someone's landing. Eh? In two seven zero at one six. Man, you guys, uh, I'm sure you guys could see this screen. Look at these planes all over the place. All over <laughs> the place. That's so weird. I'm hearing the ATIS. Number 8 Golf Mike, where are you going now? Number 8 Golf Mike, we're departing to the Vincent Thomas Bridge. Number 8 Golf Mike, Roger, you can uh, depart to the Vincent Thomas Bridge eastbound. Number 8 Golf Mike. Number 9 or Sierra Lima, turn left, taxiway, echo, contact ground. Contact ground on echo, 779 Sierra Lima. And then number 3, Whiskey Tango, what is your departure request? We'd like to depart via far uh, back to Palomar, November 7th, Whiskey Tango. Okay, so do you want a straight out departure stop on the shoreline all the way around the shoreline to Palomar, or would you like a left downwind departure? <laughs> we can go straight out along the shoreline, it'd be great. Uh, number 73, Whiskey Tango. Number 3, Whiskey Tango, Roger. Straight out departure is approved. Rowing 2, 9 or left. Clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 2, 9 or left. Number 73, Whiskey Tango for shoreline departure. And then now, that's not holding short. Rowing 2, 9 or left. Go ahead. Yeah, 1215 Golf short of 29 left, ready for takeoff. Uh, left, down one departure. 1215 Golf Torrance Tower, Roger, hold short runway 29 or left. Hold short 29 or left, 1215 Golf. We'll do a left down one. And by that time, by the time I get here, I'll be above the multiple aircraft. I'll be above the airspace and I'll just keep turning. As you and LA special flight rules. Golf Mike, we'll keep our altitude low. Man, there's a lot of planes training today. Look at that. It's a busy training day because it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. All right. Let's do this. All right, that plane's off. Okay, fuel selectors both, cow flaps open, trims both set for takeoff. I got my prop forward, I'll get my mixture forward here in a moment. Flaps are 10 degrees and my lights are all on. We are good to go. Good to go. Everything looks good. My electrical system looks good. Everything's looking good. Phenomenal. Number one, five golf left down and departures approved. Only two, nine or left, clear for takeoff. Two, nine or left, clear for takeoff. One, two, one, five golf. All right, here we go. All right, runway's clear and final's clear. All right, here we go. Takeoff power is set. 
and we're off, just like that. Power 783 Delta Golf, we'll offset a little bit. Power 783 Delta Golf, for entire left traffic of pre runway 200 left, there for takeoff. Now we're fishing for 34 gallons an hour. Okay, here comes VY. Number three, Whiskey Tango, southbound turn is approved. Frequency change approved. Have a good flight. Thanks for your help. I know it's busy out here. Good job. Some of the viewers can go help it. Thanks. Good job, ma'am. There we go. We're on our way, folks. All right, 39 inches, 2,500 RPM, and 34 gallons an hour on fuel. Flaps are up, power's where I want it, and all looks good. Temperatures look good. Now we're on our way. Beautiful torrents, or Palace Verdes. Verdes, Palace Verdes. Man, it's a nice day. All right. That's all good. 2,200 climbing 4,500. I should be out of the airspace here in 150 feet. And at that time I could do whatever I want in terms of uh, frequencies and everything else. All right, here comes LA special flight rules and I'll turn inbound here to this waypoint I created to enter into LA special flight rules in just a moment. Uh, actually, I could do that right now. It's USR 123, so highlight, direct, enter, enter, and over here I'll switch to GPS, and the plane will flip us left and go direct to USR 123, as you guys can see right there. I'm listening to 2855. I don't hear anyone. Um, looks like someone is exiting, leaving LA Special Flight Rules, but looks like they probably already made their last call. There's torrents beneath us, and let's take it away. All right, 4,500 in the box, 2855, 1201 on the beacon code, and we're good to go. Here comes 3,500 for 4,500. There's the 1,000 to go sound. There we are, planes tracking direct USR 123 right there. Temperatures look good. Okay, 4,000 for 4,500. All right, 300 to go. There's the 45 flashing. Not too much wind up here today, so that's not bad. There we go. Thirty inches of manifold pressure. go. 2300 RPM. 
and we'll lean her out all the way to 75 ridge of peak TIT. Let's see where that's at. So 14, there's 1,500. Looks like the highest TIT we found. There we go, go 1500. Perfect. All right, all looks good. Here we go. Coming up on the waypoint, I got 2.4 miles to go. Everything looks good. Temperatures look good. We'll go ahead and close the cow flaps here for a moment, gain a few knots of airspeed. And we're on our way. Let's see. Looks like computer showing one hour and five minutes to go, which would be nice. Let's see what winds are looking like. Uh, yeah, it looks like pretty much the same at uh, eight, nine, ten thousand 10,000 feet. All right. LAX is right in front of me, Marina Del Rey is to the left of it. And we should be turning left here in a moment, tracking uh, through LA Special Flight Rules. I'll go ahead and make my first, uh, my first call. Here we go. LA Special Flight Rules, White Cessna is 4,500 over Imperial Highway, heading north uh, westbound, LA Special Flight Rules. All right, there's call number one. LAX is right here off the left. And all looks good. Looks like we're cooking 142 on the ground speed with the cow flaps closed. And computer showing one hour on the ground uh, in Trona at 317 local time. It's currently 217, so one hour from now. Here we go. Make another call. LA Special Flight Rules, the White Cessna is uh, 4,500 heading north to westbound over LAX, LA Special Flight Rules. There we go. All looks good. Looks like 142 on the ground speed, it is. Special flight rules, white Cessna's 4,500 heading northwestbound over Bologna Creek, Cali Special flight rules. All right, there's the 405 off our right, lots of traffic. Point Doom, Malibu, Calabasas is smack ahead. We got Simi Valley off the, le uh, the right. I could see Van Nuys and Burbank. Beautiful, clear day today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, once I get to the other side of the LA Special flight rules, as always, I will not begin my climb until I'm cleared of the Bravo, and then I'll get on with approach, and we'll see what shortcuts we can get today over to uh, Trona. All right, here comes Santa Monica in a moment. And I'll open my cow flaps here for the climb. 
I'll be going up to uh, 9,500. There we go. LA Special Flight Rules, White Cessna 4,500 over Santa Monica, heading northwestbound. Last call, LA Special Flight Rules. All right, there's that transponder VFR. I'll be switching World to Cup, approach. Right, speed, right turn, heading up three four zero. Back for climbing traffic. And we'll see what right happens. Right turn to three four zero. Six seven five four zero. I am currently ten south of Van Nuys. That approach. Good afternoon, uh, Station Air one two one five Golf. Station Air one two one five Golf. Go ahead. Yeah, we're approximately 10 to the south of Van Nuys, just out of special flight rules, 4,500. Looking for a flight following up to uh, Trona, Lima, 72. I think you said you're a Centurion. Uh, go ahead and uh, ID inform me and verify altitude requesting the final. It's uh, Station Air Cessna 206, and uh, looking for a uh, flight following to Trona, uh, 9,500. I understand, and that's Lima, 72, you said it's correct? Uh, affirmative, one time call. All right, golf. All right, you're going to contact you northwest of Santa Monica. I'll have a code in a moment. Burbank altimeter is 2985. 2985, uh, position checks, 1215, go. There we go. Approach Mooney, 650 uniform. I've got two notes on my pad. 4,000 or 4,200? 650 uniform, just uh, 4,000. I'm going to turn you left to join here one mile. 4,000, 650 uniform. Two notes and on my uniform, you actually turn left now. You're three from moving. Turn left heading two four zero. Maintain four thousand. Full stop. Respond. Approach course cleared. Our never wait two and approach. Six fifty uniform. Left to two four zero. Maintain four thousand. Full established. All right, there's cleared the ceiling. Runway two one. Seven I'm, I'm raising my standard altitude to eight thousand feet. 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 Eight thousand are now GPS to runway 21. Thank you. Uh, well, it's calling SoCal and uh, 1215 Golf Squad 4717. 4717, 15 Golf. 54, I'll tell you, you're going to have traffic going to be at 1 o'clock at 3 miles westbound, 6.5 to VFR Skyhawk. Turn right heading 030, okay. back behind that traffic. 030, 6754, tell me. 7 Romeo Alpha, traffic's off your uh, left, 10 to 9 o'clock, 3 miles northeast bound to King or 6.2, climb oh, behind you. Looking for traffic, 7 Romeo Alpha. And one two one five off, and uh, you said you weren't going to uh, 95 today. Not uh, not an odd, not an even altitude, but an odd altitude. Yeah, it's uh, destinations approximately a zero two zero heading from my present position. Is direct destination possible for a one five off? One five off. Go ahead and contact approach one at three four point two for now. Thirty four two for their traffic, and they'll get you on navigation here as you get a little higher. Thirty four two. Thanks. One two one five off. And approach station air, 1215 Golf, level 4,500, uh, looking for uh, ONAV to Trona. Er, 1215 Golf, Alberts, Burbank altimeter is 2984. Um, where is Trona? I've barely never heard that in my life. Trona is uh, Lima 72. It's uh, somewhere up in uh, Death Valley. It's a 020 heading or so from my uh, present position. Frencher, and uh, what else do you think is that? 9,500. Uh, say again? 9,500 for a one-time call. Roger, uh, VFR climb your discretion. VFR climb our discretion and is uh, direct destination uh, possible at this time? Uh, yeah, you can resume with navigation. And ONAV, uh, 1215 Golf, thanks. All right, here we go. Direct, enter, enter. And I'm going to, actually it's on GPS. And so plane is turning right. And I'll be flying right through Burbank, uh, just scraping the top of it. And I'm going ONAV. Approach. Cessna 9907 Romeo Alpha, level 6500 with request. 9907 Romeo Alpha, took out purchase request. Okay, now that that's taken care of, what I want to talk today a little bit about is I want to talk about the difference between flight level change and vertical speed. So we'll do a little bit of autopilot uh, discussion on today's flight. And uh, so. We know. Burbank. Display heading three five zero. I'll have on course for you in about five miles. Roger three five zero on the heading one two one five go. You could uh, start a VFR climb whenever you want. Roger that one five go. He wants me to climb, but I want to hold off for just a second because I want to uh, talk about it. So vertical speed um, and flight level change. So let's talk about flight level change. I need to climb up to ninety five hundred feet. So here's what flight level change does. If I hit flight level change, it automatically defaults to the speed that I have in here at the moment that I hit it. If I want to do nose up, 
that will make that speed lower, right? Because if you want to slow down in a plane using pitch, you pitch up. If I press nose down, it will make that speed higher. So what I want to do is go ahead and pitch nose up to make that speed lower. And as long as my ceiling is raised, the plane will go ahead and maintain that speed I told it to using pitch. So here comes my power. Okay, send more mail so you can begin to be a part to send your discretion. Be a part to send our discretion. Send more mail. All right, there's the power. And send more mail so I actually register for now. Maintain be a part at or about 6,000. Let's go 34 gallons an hour. Golf. Maintain VFR at or below 5,500 traffic, one moving at 12 o'clock, three miles west out, 6,500 in Skyhawk. Heart at or, at or below uh, 5,500, look for traffic, one, two, one, five, golf. So flight level change, what flight level change does literally is how you would maintain speed with pitch. So when we select flight level change, whether we're climbing or descending, and we'll talk about that in a little bit in, uh, even further, but whether we're climbing or descending, flight level change, all the plane does there is maintains the speed with pitch. Air 1215 golf, you can resume navigation. ONAV uh, 1215 golf. And GPS, there we go. Let's see if the traffic's in sight. I don't see them. It should be a factor. November 417, Papa Whiskey Radar Services terminates. Clock 1201, frequency change approved. 201, thanks for your help. So, so flight level change versus vertical speed. So with flight level change, the plane, as we said, will maintain our speed with pitch. Now here's how it works. It's really simple. If I want the plane to climb in flight level change, maintaining 100 knots. If we know that the plane will go ahead and maintain the speed with pitch, then that means that if we give it excess power, more uh, than it needs... 1, 2, 1, contact, so call approach 1, 2, 4, 6. 24, 6, and uh, are we good to resume our uh, climb, 1, 5, golf? Yep, sorry, you can resume, uh, cancel opposite restriction, resume navigation, and uh, contact approach 1, 2, 4, 6. All right, altitude on at 24 six. Thanks, I want to end up going. Can approach out of flight four is with you. So if we give it excess thrust, so okay, approach for bank up The only way for the plane to maintain RTV that were, uh, speed is by pitching up, up, and that's what we want. We want it to result in a climb. Roger, and uh, resume navigation. At approach station air, 1215 Golf, 5,500, climbing 9,500, uh, ONAV direct to destination. 1215 Golf, SoCal approach, welcome back. There we go. Uh, so, flight level change. So right now, if I want the plane to maintain 100 knots, we're currently at 122. If I tell it to maintain 100 knots, what will the plane do in order to maintain 100 knots? It will pitch up. That's what I want. But guess what it will do as it approaches 100 knots, and now it goes into the 90s. It will pitch down to gain that speed back up to 100. And that's where flight level change gives us that speed protection. So it won't stall on me. So here we go. Flight level change, we set it automatically, throws in there the speed that I press the button at. And then I go ahead and do nose up to lower that speed to 100 knots. And look what the plane is doing over here. I did 100, so get a departure rate of contact, climb, maintain 5,000. Look at what the plane is doing. The plane on its own. Back Los Angeles Center, 125.8 today. 125.8, so on. The plane on its own is raising, is raising the nose, and look at the speed it's maintaining. 100 knots. Just like that. And that's what flight level change is. So, of course, especially in a naturally aspirated airplane, as we gain altitude, our overall power output decreases. And so in order for the plane to maintain a given speed, the higher we go, uh, the lower that rate of climb will become. Uh, until eventually, sometimes, we won't be able to even climb at all in order to maintain that speed. Um, and so that's where you sort of reach what I call the flight level change ceiling. Um, 
at which point you'll have to either add power or select a lower speed for the plane to maintain uh, on your climb. And so that's really what flight level change is. It's a function of telling the airplane what speed to maintain with pitch. And on the flip side of all that, it's us, the pilots, giving the plane either excess or a deficiency in thrust in order for either a climb or descent to be commenced. And that's what flight level change is. So again, let's think about it together one more time. If I want the airplane to climb maintaining 100 knots, let's go opposite. Let's say we give the plane a deficiency in thrust. So I tell the airplane, hey, I want you to climb to 9,500 feet at 100 knots, and, it, and I take power away from it. Guess what it will do? The only way for it to go to 100 knots and maintain it is descent, because it doesn't have enough power, so it must do that. Remember, flight level change only maintains its speed with pitch, not power. So if it has a deficiency in thrust, in order for it to reach 100, there's no way it's climbing, because it'll lose even further speed, because it has a deficiency in thrust. Now on the flip side of things, if I give it a excess thrust, now all of a sudden the plane goes, holy cow, here's 110, 115, 120, I don't want this. I want to do a good job and maintain 100 knots just like you asked me. And the only way for the plane to do that again is pitch. And so the way we slow down in a plane using pitch is by pitching up. And we want that because we want to climb up to 9,500 feet. So flight level change is us telling the plane what speed to maintain with pitch, and then us, the pilots, giving the plane either excess or a deficiency in thrust. So that short answer is when climbing with flight level change, we give the plane excess thrust. When descending in flight level change, we give the plane or take away and we create a deficiency in thrust. Think about it this way. Anytime there's excess thrust, the plane needs to slow down and it does that by pitching up. Anytime there's a deficiency in thrust, the plane needs to speed up, and it does that by pitching down. And that is how flight level change works. It's really simple. If you are in flight training yourself, and your instructor ever asked you to conduct, uh, perform a constant speed climb, you do the exact same thing. You turn into a flight level change machine. You don't play with your power in constant speed climbs or descents. You only care about the pitch. So much so, that in constant speed climbs, you could cover your altimeter with a sticky note because all you care about is moving your yoke, controlling your speed while the power is constant. And that's what flight level changes. So right now, we're crossing through 8,000 feet on the way up to 9,500 feet. And I ask the plane to maintain 100 knots, and there it is. It's generating and constantly changing whatever pitch attitude is necessary, whatever rate of climb is required, whatever pitch is necessary in order to maintain 100, resulting in any one of these rate of climbs. Now, on the flip side of things, on the, on the flip side of things, vertical speed unlike flight level change, does not maintain a constant airspeed using pitch. It maintains a constant rate of climb, disregarding the airspeed. So you can see what the problem is climbing in vertical speed. As you gain altitude and you need more power to maintain that same rate of climb and you get distracted, your speed's bleeding off, bleeding off, bleeding off, so you don't have that speed protection. And that's why we descend, there's the thousand to go. That's why we descend with vertical speed um, and we climb flight level change. Two, three o'clock, four miles westbound, eight point seven indicated touch. Then looks like it's going to pass well up your right. Roger that one, five go. And so, got him right over here. So flight level change will maintain a constant speed via pitch, disregarding the rate of climb. Meaning, the rate of climb is a result. It's a byproduct of whatever amount of excess thrust or deficiency of thrust the plane has, depending if you're climbing or descending. But let's talk about a climb. In flight level change, the plane will maintain a constant speed with pitch, and as long as there's excess thrust, remember, the plane has to find a way to slow down to not speed up above that speed. Roger that one, five golf in. One five golf, contact Joshua, approach one two four point five five. good day. 2455, have a good day, sir, I want to one five golf. Get it 74, flying 340. 
Joshua, any L2 you want us to hold at? I have 400 feet to go. Wheeling 42, just wondering if there's an L2 you'd like us to hold at. Uh, Wheeling 42, negative northwest of Fox will keep you clear of traffic. I'll proceed to your discretion. Copy that. Uh, we'll come to 65, current location. Ready. That approach, good afternoon, station air, 1215 Golf, 900,300, climbing 900,500, direct to Trona. November 15 Golf, down to approach, palm to altimeter 2993. 93, 15 Golf. There we go. So flight level change again, maintains a speed with pitch, and as long as there's excess thrust, remember, the only way for the plane to slow down with pitch is to pitch up and that will generate a climb, which is what we want. Vertical speed will maintain a constant rate of climb, disregarding the speed. So think of it this way. Let me just cruise out here. Down. We'll close the count flaps here in a moment. So think of it this way. Flight level change. Maintain speed and disregards the rate of climb. Vertical speed maintains the rate of climb and disregards the speed. So the difference is exactly 180. In flight level change, we maintain the plane maintains a constant speed while varying the rate of climb in order to generate that. In vertical speed, the plane maintains a constant rate of climb while not necessarily varying the speed, but the speed happens to vary as we gain altitude and overall power output comes down. And that is why, again, with flight level change, we have what's called speed protection, so we won't stall. The worst thing that will happen is the plane will stop climbing. In vertical speed, we don't have that speed protection because the plane in and of itself inherently is really stupid. It doesn't know, nor does it care about a stall. Um, not that this plane will stall, because in autopilot, the plane will actually enter into a nice uh, descent, preventing a stall from happening, which is pretty sweet. But uh, generally speaking, you don't want to reach that uh, state uh, of flight unexpectedly if you get distracted. Right, three, six, go for the contact for and so that right there is really the difference between flight level change and vertical and, uh, speed. We talked about flight level change in a climb because that's typically where we use it. Um, how it works on a descent is the same thing backwards. We tell the plane to maintain a constant speed and we cause a deficiency in thrust or power. And we do that by reducing power. And now the plane goes, holy cow, I have to maintain the speed, but wait a minute, you took my power, I'm slowing down. Guess what? Its way to do that is using pitch and specifically pitching down, and that's what we want. We want a descent. And the way you maintain, the way you control, the way you control rate of climb or descent while in flight level change mode is by either adding or um, reducing power. So in flight level change, power adjustments control your rate of climb or descent. In vertical speed, power adjustments control your airspeed. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. In flight level change, power adjustments control your rate of climb or descent. It doesn't change your speed because the plane's maintaining the constant speed with pitch. Think of flight level change airspeed as a constant speed prop. You can pitch up or down and the RPM stay the same. The airspeed is like the RPM, and the governor is the flight level change. So in flight level change, power adjustments change your rate of climb or descent. In vertical speed, power adjustments change your airspeed. And that right there is a little bit about flight level change and vertical speed. Let's even call it intro to uh, flight level change versus vertical speed. I hope that all makes sense, and uh, if you watch the channel as time goes on, of course, I'm sure I'll be back around to this topic and we'll discuss it a little more, a little more in depth and show, show some stuff in action. But uh, there you go. Flight level change versus vertical speed. My temperatures look good. There comes the cow flaps. And let's see how much speed that will give us. Whaling uh, 401, did you ever have that traffic in sight? Negative, sir, for Whaling 401. We got him on TCAS and ADSB. 
November 9 or November Golf, turn left heading 180. Turn 180, 99 November Golf. Wayland 42, that traffic is now uh, 10 o'clock and 2 miles turning southbound Gulf Stream. Wayland 42, got it in sight. Uh, we can't do it. We do a 360 here to avoid us, that helps. Wayland 42, uh, just by heading 250. Heading 250, Wayland 42. And then the Gulf has the traffic in sight. Number 9 November Golf Roger, they're on a westbound heading. Uh, they're going to follow you in, number 2 on the same approach. No, 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 Golf. Number 3, 6 Golf, contact SoCal Approach 120.4. 120.4, 3, 6 Golf, yeah. Good day. Number 3, 6 Golf, contact SoCal Approach 120.4. 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 Clear direct to view, clear the approach, 99 to Golf. Wayland 42, clear direct to view, cross to view at 6,500, clear to RNAV, runway 7 approach. Direct to view and cross at 7,100, Wayland 42, clear the approach. Wayland 41, clear direct to origami, cross to origami at 6,500, clear to RNAV, runway 7 approach. Direct to origami, 6,500, clear to RNAV, 7, Wayland 41. All right, let's see what the, ooh, cooking at 150. Let's see what the computer showing. 33 minutes left to our flight. Should have us on the ground at uh, 315 local time. 315 local time, it's currently 241. There we are. All right, so here's what we're going to talk about next. This is the, since this uh, flight is all about autopilot discussion, let's talk a little bit about let's talk a little bit about um, the horizontal, the right, the right and left uh, modes of the autopilot. So we talk a lot about the vertical modes, the flight level change, the vertical speed, VNAV, all these good stuff. Let's talk a little bit about the, specifically the heading and the nav buttons. We'll talk a little bit about the differences between them. When would you want to select one versus the other? And in which modes will you have wind correction, uh, angles, uh, protection, if you want to call it, and in which the plane will just drift and you'll have to stay on it. So to take a bird's eye view of the autopilot system for a second before we talk about the horizontal modes, uh, to take a bird's eye view, in essence, the autopilot system, the servos have the ability to control the airplane in both up, down, and right, left. Will your next turn be vertical and horizontal. A northbound or southbound turn? So with the vertical, we talk a lot about. That's not what I want to talk about right this second. We talked about it a moment ago. But with the right, left, with the horizontal, we have heading and we have nav. And I want you to think of nav as really GPS. That's what it is. It's not really because we could use it for VORs and localized things like that. So it's really for navigation, which is correct. But let's think of it in terms of GPS right now because right now we're in GPS mode. So we have so heading, five, you're gonna be number, and we have that GPS or a, uh, nav. King Air on a, uh, right now, I'm headed direct to my destination. So you can see here, I have this pink line, which is my course to my destination. I want the airplane to maintain the course. Now, here's a little subtle distinction. I don't care what heading the airplane maintains to get me to my destination. I'll say that again. I don't care what heading my plane needs to maintain in order to stay on course. So you might be asking yourself, what do you mean? Of course your heading matches your course. And the answer is, well, not quite. If we have 50 knots of wind off the left and I pointed the airplane to face my destination, guess what would happen? As time went on, the wind is from the left. As time went on, I'd be drifting right off to the right. So yes, my plane is pointing to my destination, but it's doing so while drifting way off course because my course is here. And so when it comes to right-left horizontal navigation with the autopilot, we have heading and we have nav. 
nav maintains the course, specifically whichever mode the CDI is in, VOR, localizer, I'm currently in GPS, which is the pink, but that's irrelevant, it's all the same thing. Nav maintains a course, heading maintains a heading, and that's this blue heading button. So here's how it works. In nav mode, Remember, uh, six, four, three, pop the, the airplane truck, maintains the course, four, two, nine, nine, accounting three, for nine, any nine, wind uh, that might be throwing uh, it off from the right or uh, left, the and, the and it turns right. into oh, well, at whichever uh, amount of wind, and adds whichever amount of wind correction angle is needed in order to stay on course. In heading mode, the airplane is not maintaining a course, therefore, it's not accounting for any wind because it has no ability to stay on anything fighting the wind because we didn't give it a course to stay on. And so in heading mode, the plane will maintain a certain heading, meaning the plane, the nose of the airplane will continue facing in a certain direction. But there will be a lot of drift if there's a lot of wind while one facing one in that direction. Approach on 133.65. 3355, one, two, And approach, good afternoon, station air, 1215 Golf, level 9500, direct to Trona. 1215 Golf, that restricted area that you're about to enter is hot, remain clear. Remain clear, the restricted, 15 Golf. There we go. 115 Golf, the other adult cemetery, 2991. 2991, 15 Golf. So, in heading, too bad, we didn't get the direct to. In heading mode, the airplane will not maintain a course because it doesn't have a course to maintain. Good day. 455. It will continue facing. It will continue facing in a certain direction, but the drift is very much possible if there's a lot of wind going on. So when in nav mode the plane will maintain your course. In heading mode the plane will maintain a heading. And here's how it works. In nav mode the plane will generate whichever heading is needed to stay on course. In heading mode, the plane will simply hold the heading while drifting in any one direction or another if there's a lot of wind. So I hope that makes sense. Nothing too complicated, but that's really the difference between the two. In a zero wind condition, my course and my heading will be the same. And that's how that works. So that's the difference between heading and nav. Heading and nav. In heading, all the plane does is fly which, wherever this uh, heading bug is parked. It will turn to and maintain the heading that the heading bug is parked on. In course, or in nav mode, the plane will turn to and intercept and maintain the course, whatever that course might be. So if I hit the CDI and there's VOR, it would be the radial. So this nav mode will maintain whatever mode my CDI uh, is in, HSI over there. So it could be VOR, it could be a localizer, an instrument approach. These are all courses. It's just a line over the ground. So that's how that works. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and there you have it. Heading versus Nav mode. Sister 1 1 Joshua, approach uh, Roger, standby for the switch. General Link Altimeter 2990. 9 1 flight, you're cleared out, Sushu, so airspace, maintain VFR on departure, squawk VFR. Have a good day. Alright, let's see. Looks like 29 minutes should be on the ground at 3.17 local time. 3.17 local time. Chester 1-1, one, one. where'd you want to join? Chester 1-1. One, one. Mr. 1-1, uh, uh, Roger. And are you familiar with the 3000 AGL restriction, uh, uh, India through Juliet? Yeah.
All right. Four one traffic west and five miles one two thousand indicated glider. Coming up on Mojave, it's right in front of me right now. Mojave Spaceport. There it is, smack in front of us. Another thing I want to talk about as it relates to autopilot, it's not quite autopilot, but it's sort of halfway there. But it's a big thing that comes up again and again and again. And I've received a few questions about it from people watching the videos who emailed me. So let's just talk about it here. And that is, what is your opinion, Yol, about hand flying the airplane? So autopilot's off. Autopilot is disconnected. So people are asking, what's your opinion, Yol, about hand flying the airplane with the flight director? And for those of you who don't know what I mean is, this flight director, the pink little thing there, that bar moves in accordance with whatever uh, is found in the scoreboard. So I'll give you an example. Let's say in my scoreboard I'm in heading mode. And let's also say that I'm, my heading is right now 350, what it is. But let's assume that my heading bug, again, remember, I'm hand flying the airplane, so my heading bug could be in one thing and I could be in heading mode. So let's say... Actually, you know what? Let me show it show it to you in all in actuality rather than talk about it. So here comes the autopilot. I'm, th I'm throwing the autopilot away. So autopilot's disconnected. You see, it's not over here. I'm hand flying the airplane. Check it out. My scoreboard is in heading because uh, there, there's a scoreboard gone, right? So you see there's no flight director. So now I'm pressing heading. So there's heading. Look what shows up. Flight director. Now I want you to see what the flight director does when I move the heading bug to the right. Look at this. So right now the flight director with autopilot off is representing the heading. Check it out. I'm moving the heading to the right. Look what the flight director does. I'm continuing to fly straight, but the flight director is banking to the right. Right? So the flight director basically tells the airplane what to do or tells me where to park my yellow chevron in order for the plane to actually fly in accordance with what my heading bug is doing. And now if I turn my heading to the left, the same thing is true. The flight director will turn to the left as I continue to fly straight. And look at that. Flight director is turning left to follow the heading bug. Now let's do the same thing with the flight level change. So I go into flight level change and I tell the plane to go ahead and maintain 100 knots, which is 25 knots slower than what I am right now. Look at what the flight director will tell me to do. It will tell me, the pilot who's hand flying, will say, hey, if you want to maintain 100 knots, guess what you need to do? You need to go ahead and pitch up. You see how it's going up above me there? Let's say I want to go ahead and descend. Actually, it won't. My bad, because I didn't raise the ceiling. So let's go back to flight level change. And here comes the 100 knots. And now let's see what the command bars will do. There's 100 knots. And look at what the flight director is doing. It's telling me, hey, pick the nose up to maintain 100 knots. Look at that. Now if I go to if I go to vertical speed and I tell it to descend at 500 feet a minute, look what happens. And I'll just turn here towards Trona as I do this. Look at what the flight director is telling me to do. The flight director will come all the way down. Let's go to a thousand. Let's go to 1,500 feet a minute to make this pronounced. And now it's turning left to face that heading bug. But check it out. Look at what the flight director is telling me to do. In order to reach a descent to 1,500 feet a minute. It's telling me to pitch down. So the million dollar question that I get is, Yol, what's your opinion of hand flying the airplane with the flight director on like that, following whatever is in the scoreboard? with the autopilot disengaged, meaning what do you think of a pilot 
slapping the yellow chevron, the command bar, um, inside of that flight director to achieve whatever it is they want. So here's my answer to that. I am not a fan of that. And the reason I'm not a fan of that is twofold. Number one, 99% of the time when I'm hand flying a plane with someone in my life, meaning my students, the reason we're hand flying it and not autopiloting it, autopiloting it is because that student most likely is in need of hand flying training. Which is why we're specifically hand flying. What that student isn't in need of is flight director chasing training. And so that's reason number one. When we hand fly a plane, let's hand fly the plane. In fact, even better, let's turn the screen off and look outside and hand fly the plane. So that's reason number one. But here's the biggest reason why I'm not a fan of it. The reason I'm not a fan of flying the airplane and chasing that flight director while hand flying is because, yes, it works great if your situational awareness is 100% at 100. Meaning, if you selected the precise modes and you have exactly what you need in your scoreboard for the mission that you want the airplane to execute, then yes, that works perfect if you stick your command bar inside the flight director. But here's what I find so often, especially in a cloud in IFR, is that people's situational awareness is not at 100%. And here's the problem with situational awareness not being at 100%, is that you don't know it's not at 100% because you're not 100% situationally aware. <laughs> it's crazy how situational awareness works. And so because of that, because to fly that, what, what I just demonstrated, properly, we need to be 100% on it. We need to have the exact modes going on. We need to, you know, I don't want to be trying, I don't want to be thinking, if I'm, if I'm doing that, I don't want to be thinking that my, my flight director is telling me where to go to track my course while I'm in heading mode. And now I'm drifting off. But I see that happen way too often. So my short answer to the question of, Yoel, what's your opinion of hand flying the airplane while chasing the flight director? I'm not a fan of it. I'm not. If you want to hand fly the plane, hand fly the plane. We have enough cues for many, many, many years. We've flown planes and clouds with no flight directors safely. We have enough cues to confirm to us what's happening and what we need to be doing. We don't need to do that. So that's my opinion. Um, but really, it's that situational awareness. I see way too many people think they're in heading mode and they're in nav mode, think they're in nav mode and they're in heading mode, think they're in vertical speed, they're in flight level change, uh, think they're descending, but, the, but the, 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 uh, they're in altitude hold mode. And so the uh, flight director is, isn't moving, and so they, they're not climbing or descending. And too many, too often, I see people not even realizing what's going on. So because of that, I hope it makes sense. That's my two cents. Is it dangerous to do it? Of course not. By no, by no means am I saying it's, if you're someone who does that, more, hey, it's, it, to each their own. Um, it's just something that requires a high amount of situational awareness, especially if you're in a cloud or IMC. Um, you don't want to be, you know, doing what... Now, the thing about having the flight director on with the autopilot is that now you're not so focused in on maintaining aircraft control, positive aircraft control, because you're not hand-flying it. So you freed your brain up a little bit. Now you're able to relax a little bit, look at the operation, monitor the systems, and make sure, okay, I am indeed in heading or nav mode. But when you're hand-flying the plane, chasing the flight director, you're a little bit busy, and your brain won't necessarily have that room um, to go ahead and figure all these things out on the fly. So for those reasons, I'm personally not a fan, but if you're someone who does it or you're into doing it or you want to try it sometimes, I think it's a cool thing to try and see how that works and really see how the flight director works. It's a pretty cool system. So that's my two cents on that. Let's see. Let's get back to autopilot here. Let's get back to 9500. And let's go altitude. Let's go direct enter, enter, we'll go nav. So there's altitude, GPS, I'm happy. Here comes the flight director. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and let's select a nice approach. Let's do procedure, select approach. And we'll go to 3-5, we'll do a straight in. We'll do activate, 
and then the plane will go there. That's perfect right there. And now the plane is telling me to be at 2670 at this straight waypoint. And so what I will do is I'll come down here and I'll tell it, hey, I want to be at 500 feet a minute. So it's telling me top of descent two minutes and 45 seconds from now. All I need to do is lower the floor. Two, we'll go to 25. And I need to hit VNAV and I'll put that V path in. Um, Let's actually go to 25, or uh, we'll just climb to 95, and I have V-Path here in arm, and that's it, and then we can see in the VSD here, we can see my top of descent coming up here in a moment, all the way down to this waypoint. Go ahead, 15 Golf. 15 Golf, traffic 1 o'clock and 3 miles southbound, heavy tanker 11,000 descending, caution, wake turbulence. Inside, 15 Golf. There they are. So there we have it. We'll VNAV our way down to this made up waypoint of ours. Temperatures look good. Just one one Roger stand by support. And we'll get twenty two niner in there. Vertical track. All right, there's a minute to go to our top of descent. Let's just do that. That's good. Number one five golf traffic. Uh, two o'clock in two miles. Uh, flight at two at T thirty eight. Maneuvering one four thousand. Uh, looking one five golf. Okay. Here we go. Looks like we should be there in 15 minutes on the ground at 3.18 local time. As we reach uh, Death Valley, hope you guys enjoyed the flight. Hope you all learned something. There's so much to the autopilot system. There's so much to the avionics. But my goal, what I'm looking to do is little bits at a time. And again, as always, a lot of what I talk about, most of what I talk about actually uh, I just want to make sure the plane will descend here. There's VPATH, and we are descending. And there comes the nose. Solid. Most of what I talk about um, are basically questions or things that I get from uh, uh, viewers uh, who email me. So as always, feel free. There's emails in the description uh, of the video. Feel free to email me if there's anything specific you want to talk about, if there's any questions you have about anything. Reduce my power, get a little bumpy here. I've got the trip, the Roger, 15 If there's anything you want me to talk about, go ahead, send me an email, and I do my very best to cover it sooner or later. Sometimes it takes me a little time, but eventually I get to it. Um, and I love hearing from you guys. So keep those emails coming. Let's see. Looks like we're good to go here. 961 emergency squawk approved. All is kosher. Night six one emergency squawk observed. Squawk zero four one one. Night six one traffic northeast and one mile southbound. Tanker two five zero with uh, one aircraft in tow. Two five zero tanker. 
So Trona, as you guys can see, is literally buried in the middle of MOAs and restricted galore. So it's sort of right in the middle of all that, which is cool. There you go to uh, Roger. Traffic beneath you eastbound to uh, level 205 Hornet. Hornet. Get some lights coming. There we go. All looks good. Cow flaps are closed. Everything is good to go. Let's add some power. So there we have it. Um, like I said before, uh, email me anything and everything. Tell me where you're located, where you're flying, what airplane you fly. Um, it's good stuff. Love talking. Man, I talk with people. It's insane to me. I say this all the time. From uh, all over the world. Australia, Belgium, Belgium, uh, Belgium. Arno. Arno, if you're watching this, shout out to Arno from Belgium. Crazy. This YouTube has uh, quite a reach. Australia, East Coast, West Coast, Europe, lots of Europe. Um, it's amazing, the uh, community and the people who uh, these videos go out to. But, um, but yeah, if you're in flight training, if you're not, I actually got an email recently. I received an email from someone who said that uh, they've always wanted to fly, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure of the wording, but they said something to the effect of life got in the way or whatever, and they went down a different career path, and now they uh, fly... Uh, virtually through me or something like that and it warms my heart it warms my heart it's uh it's cool to know that there's people out there who wanted to do it didn't do it for whatever reason uh and now they just enjoy these videos so um whatever good these videos do i'm happy i'm happy so there we are oh and if anyone is in uh the la area ever reach out to me we'll do some flying We'll get, uh, we'll get in the air. And we'll make some stuff happen. We'll zip around uh, Southern California or Northern California. Or the, and or the surrounding areas. Radar zero 02, radar service terminating contact support. All right, there we go. Looks like 11 more minutes. A little puppy on the way down. Inyo Kern is right off there to the left. This airport here, non tower. Inyo Kern. And we'll see what the winds do down there. What direction we'll land. Yeah, six one, you can keep the Poncho three makes no difference to me. You got traffic south five miles southeast bound five level two three zero F thirty five. F thirty five. The night six one, what are your intentions now? Roger. Night six one tanker track is uh, active nineteen to twenty one. Golf radar service terminated. Squawk TFR, have a good day. TFR, thanks for your help. 125 Golf. There we go. And let's see if anyone's in Trona. I doubt it. I'll switch in a little bit. Because if he needs to get a hold of me, I want to listen to him still a little bit. Just a little bit. And looks like I got four knots on the tail and one knot of left crosswind. Two knots off the left. Three knots off the left. Go 
three, uh, Roger Channel Lake, Atlanta Runway 21, one one three zero at six, altimeter two nine eight eight. There we are. My indicated airspeed is one twenty nine. My true is one forty three, and my ground is one forty five. Off the bat, that tells me that my tail or headwinds are very non-existent ish, and that's confirmed by the one knot of tailwind. Because in a zero wind condition, your true and ground speed are the same. Crosswind have absolutely no impact on ground or true at all. Only headwind and or tailwind components. Here we go, 5,900 descending. Six one traffic southwest. Trona is right behind that miles little mountain range. Tanker, one six thousand for China Lake. Let's go ahead and switch to heading. And we'll go so a little three, bit this three, way. Three traffic, twelve o'clock, five miles, one one thousand Hornet. That looks good. All is good. So three three Hornet has you in sight. Eight minutes to go. All right, 5,500, we're descending. Looks like uh, temperature is 19 Celsius. Trona is at about 1,500 feet Pretty above good. sea level. So that is 4,000 feet beneath me. So that's two degrees per thousand. That's eight degrees, so 19 Celsius. I'm guessing 28 degrees on the ground. It'll be nice and hot out here. All looks good. Lova cool. All right. I'd go direct, but I want to skirt around this uh, restricted, restricted area. Three three heavy contact car. A little bumpy out here. There's one two Joshua for Roger Ident and say request the Edward Altimeter two nine or eight nine. One two radar contact Cal City Airport one zero miles to the east traffic twelve o'clock one zero miles a Hornet one zero thousand maneuvering Hornet. All right, all looks good for our arrival. We got our lights on. We'll get our uh, prop and make sure forward. Cal flaps are closed. We'll go ahead and open them for landing. Fuel selectors both. All looks good. Electrical systems good. Temperatures are good. All is good in the hood, folks. And then we'll do direct vertical enter, track. Enter. There we go. And I'll go nav. And then what I will do, we are still in VNAV. We're descending to that straight in waypoint for the straight in visual approach. And then what I'll do, I'll actually lower the floor to beneath airport elevation so the plane will just continue descending. And what I'll do is I'll hit the approach button right over here. And it puts the GP, the glide path, in white on standby on the right. And once the plane reaches that altitude, it will switch to the made up glide path. It's made up because it's a visual, it's not a published instrument approach. So it's a little different than VNAV, it's not necessarily okay. VNAV, although it sort of kind of is. Um, and it'll switch to the glide path. And the diamond is above me right now. So it's really, it looks like an instrument approach. And so there you have it. There we have it. And on one of these flights, we'll talk all about approaches. We'll talk all about activate approach versus activate 
vectors to final versus uh, uh, everything. We'll talk about all the things to do with approaches. There's a lot of confusion when it comes to autopilot avionics and approaches in these airplanes for some reason. But it's much simpler than you think. It's really simple. All right, here we go. Looking at the wind, looks like from this vantage point, runway 35 is favored, which is what I've set up for. But we'll see what it does as it get closer. Toronto traffic, white Cessna is 10 to the south, inbound straight in, full stop 35, Toronto. There's the airport right in front of me. There's Trona off the left. Still in VNAV. VPATH's engaged until I read this straight, once I reach this straight waypoint. Um, it should switch to the glide path because I have the approach button pressed. All the approach button does, and again, we'll talk about this in depth some other time. All the approach button does is it arms both the GPS or the nav and the glide path. So it basically arms the up, down, and the right, left. That's it. That's all it does. And if I had it my way, I would rename this button arm, not approach. But we'll talk all about that. Here we go. The, the diamond's coming down. And looks like I got two knots now on the tail, three knots, which I'm good. I'll land all the way up to about 10 or so knots of tailwind. I'm fine with that. Otherwise, I'll fly and land on the other, to the other direction. Short traffic, White Sassman is five to the south, inbound uh, straight in, full stop, three side, Trona. Okay, so the wind is increasing now. Four knots, five knots on the tail. We'll see what it is short final. If it goes any much higher than that, we'll just go ahead, fly around, and land on one seven. All right, here we go. Prop forward, mixture forward. Here comes flaps 10, my lights are on, my cow flaps are open. And this is all the plane. This is all the plane right here. There we are. Runway's right in front of me, I hope you guys can see out the window. Um, otherwise, at least I see the runway, which is good. So now the plane will maintain the speed, this uh, altitude, and then when the diamond touches the center, it will automatically enter into a descent. I have six knots of wind behind me. There we go. Now the plane's descending. There we go. Nice descent to the runway. Looks like nine knots of wind behind me. You know what? Let's fly around. Autopilot off. Yeah. Trotter traffic, white Cessna is uh, left downwind to one seven full stop Trotter. All right. I always hold for 3.5, but it looks like 1.7 it is. There it is right there. We'll just do left traffic.
do a little short approach. Why not? We'll do a short approach. I'll show you what the stole kit could do. It's crazy. So right now I'm a thousand feet above the runway. There's the runway. Here's flaps 10. Here's flaps 20. And here's flaps full. No traffic, White Cessna is uh, doing a short approach, 1-7, full stop, Charter. All right. Absolutely insane. I'm just literally falling. Coordination, coordination is key over here. See if we'll make it. Little slip. Straighten her out. Bleed off all the energy. And we're down. Keep that pressure off the nose wheel. And it takes nothing, the distance. It's absolutely crazy. Yoke all the way back. And we'll make the first right. Stole kits are absolutely awesome. And there's Robbie. <laughs> there we go. All right, you guys. Thanks for joining me. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope y'all learned something. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Let's do this. There we go. All right. AC off. Lights off. There we go. Flaps are up. Cow flaps are open. Fuel selector. Everything looks good. All right. Here we go. Oh.